Today I want to talk to you about a technique so simple that we hardly ever consider it a technique at all. It's called the dribble. This is what it looks like. And whether you think it's important or not, I would suggest that it's one of those slights, uh, not slights, but pieces of handling, that you should take a little time and learn how to do it well, because it allows you to handle the cards very, very cleanly and openly and say things to your audience like, say stop anywhere, place your card back into the pack, or take out any card and look at it, show it to your friends. So aside from spreading the cards, which is occasionally inconvenient from a sleight of hand perspective, it allows you to let the cards fall from hand to hand in a really open, above board way that is still completely adaptable for your sleight of hand needs. Now, a lot of magic books and DVDs and teachers make the assumption that we already know how to dribble cards correctly or else we wouldn't be in magic. But as I can tell from a lot of my meetings I have with first and new students, this is a really, really misunderstood technique. It's not self-working. It's not completely simple. And until you really learn how it works a little bit, it can fool you. Now, the first main mistake that people uh, often make when they're trying to learn how to dr dribble the cards is they will take them at the opposing corners. Now, they do this because with only a corner touching your second finger and thumb, it's actually much easier to let the cards dribble off your hands. But there's two problems with using this grip for the dribble. The first is it's affected. Notice the way my pinky just wants to go up like this. It's precious. So it's like, hey, I'd like you to say stop anytime. Precious. Now you know card magic has the reputation for being more than precious enough as it is. So it'd be nice if you just took the cards from above like a normal person and dribble the cards from hand to hand. But also for purposes of uniformity. In addition to this being precious and affected, it's also not very useful for sleight of hand. There's a lot of secret principles we may choose to apply when we're dribbling cards from hand to hand that become impossible to apply and certainly impossible to apply uh, imperceptibly and naturally when your cards are in this position. So for that reason, when you want to learn how to dribble the cards, you want to take the front end of the deck by the second finger on the outer phalange and the back end on the outer phalange of the thumb like so. The first finger goes on top, and a lot of students I have, this is the second mistake that most people make when they're getting started, is they attempt to dribble the cards off in this position with the hand arched over the deck. Now it's true, I can do that, and with a lot of time and practice, you'll be able to as well. But more often when I see students trying to learn this, they've got the hand arched right over the deck like this, and the cards come out grudgingly, stubbornly, in big clumps, which isn't really the purpose of the dribble at all. And so we we're brought back to the same situation we were in a Card Magic Minute a couple weeks ago when we talked about running the cards and how students often attempt to hold the cards with the pack parallel to the palm. And it's difficult to just get one card off at a time that way because of the direction of the grain that you're running along your fingers. And we learned that when you tilt the cards this way, and the cards are more horizontally along, that is, they're feeling along the edges lengthwise as the finger lies across them, it's much more easy for them to let go one card at a time and feel the pressure of the specific cards as they float by. Well, it's the same exact thing when you're actually dribbling the cards. So instead of holding the cards from above like so, you want to, using this pivot post of the second finger and thumb, you want to pivot your entire hand down so that the palm and the deck are more or less parallel. And what that's going to do is it's going to place your thumb along the back and your second finger more or less along the front. And now the actual dribbling process is going to get a lot easier because instead of trying traverse to traverse up the second finger and naturally drop cards all the way, what you're actually going to be doing is rolling, rolling the second finger and the thumb away from the cards, like so. And as you roll the fingers out and you apply light downward pressure with your first finger and also remember to hold these cards as close to the bottoms of the finger and thumb as you can, remember, not on the vertical axis but on the horizontal axis, those cards are going to fall off as your finger rolls up and away, like so. So you can find, with just a little bit of practice, you can very easily dribble those cards from hand to hand. Now when you're practicing, 
Don't worry about the future. Don't worry about doing some giant riffle or dribble from any one of a thousand positions. Just keep the cards in your hand, pick them up, and dribble them lightly from one hand to the other. Make sure always to focus on a nice, even distribution, because if the cards as they fall off are going this way and that, that's the sort of thing that can really get out of your control when you're performing for, for an actual audience. You want to have the cards falling in a nice, delicate stream. So those are some things to think about when you're trying to learn this most important technique, the basic dribble. Um, there's a lot of ways that it can be customized and altered and applied to all sorts of sleight of hand, but if you learn to do it the way we just discussed it, you won't be shutting down any of those avenues prematurely because you chose to learn a simpler way which isn't as adaptable or as practical or as useful in actual sleight of hand.